We've come to the end of the Flathead Classic. It's the time's pretty much just winding up now. We've got to get back in and hand our scorecard in. We've filled the scorecard up a lot better today than the last two days. We finally sort of worked out a couple of little uh, things that were in our favour. We had the tide pushing into a mangrove bank and a drop off and that got the job done. But what I wanted to do was go through some of the gear that we've used that's really helped us for our week. We've been out here chasing these flathead. If you haven't seen all the lures that I had at our disposal for the week, then you need to check out uh, one of my latest videos that I posted up. That went through all the lures. But um, this video is really just about the gear that made uh, a hell of a difference to our fishing, the whole experience. So we'll start with the rods and um, go through the kinds of stuff that we were using. So I, I had about uh, four rods in and three of them were spinning outfits and I had one bait caster, which was basically my swim bait setup. And uh, the swim bait setup is a 795 SB with a Corrado on it, and I've just got 20 pound braid on that and a 20 pound leader. And that was because I was fishing with these really big glide baits and uh, big crossfire lures and things like that. So that's the setup. You can see it's copped a fair bit of use, the salt's all over it now, um, but it's a high speed Shimano Corrado. And the big long rod made it a lot easier for me to cast those big baits. The other spinning outfits that we had, um, this is probably my favourite that I use for throwing. I was throwing slapsticks on this, so I was throwing my crossfire on this as well. This is a 703 SF by Dobbins in the Fury series. And um, so a seven foot rod, so nice and long, so I could get big long casts. And it can handle some of the bigger baits that we were throwing for these big fish really well. Um, it's got a 2500 Stratic on it, and on there is 10 pound braid. Um, and then we were running 20 pound leaders, which we usually run like FC rock leader. I think I had some Vanish on at times, but uh, about a meter and a half of, of fluorocarbon leader was how we set it up. And it's heavy leader because we're fishing for these really big flathead. And that's, that was our target for the whole comp really, but today it worked and we had the, the stinging treble with the 20 pound um, stinging attachment. That got chewed through twice with the big fish that we pulled in. So um, you can't really go too much lighter than that, I reckon, if you're fishing for these really big fish and um, hoping to get away, from it, uh, away with it in a comp, I reckon 20 pounds the way to go, maybe 16. Um, so that's that setup. That's probably my favorite. That's the smoothest. But look, I, when I go through gear, I never like to really just rep the highest stuff that I've got because I use a whole range of gear. And that's one of the greatest things about flathead fishing and getting into it is you can get into flathead fishing and do really well with entry level gear. So this is a 3000 Sedona by Shimano. And we used that all weekend. Ben was using that. We'll swap in between that. I've got a little thousand size Sienna I was throwing plastics on. So they're entry level reels and they're still fine. As long as they're drag smooth and you've got your braid you know tightly bound onto the spool you'll get away with it and it's a lot of fun fishing really light gear so it doesn't have to be the highest end gear um, you just make sure it's tuned up well serviced and yeah it's it's fine for these big flathead so we fish small plastics for about or oh, maybe 15 20 percent of the time we're on the water and that was really when we were just fishing through heavy weed but everything else was big baits for the big flathead and we got it done today some of the other gear, um, obviously like the iPilot Minn Kota, um, basically everyone that was out here casting and even trolling is running a, a bow mounted electric motor and that just makes a huge difference for our casting. So the iPilot, that I, I love the, the lanyard and the remote, some people use the foot pedal but we dance all around the boat when we're fighting fish so to have it at my, at my fingertips it's probably the way to go uh, for me. Um, I think I went through the reels, so just little, you can go anything, 1,000 to 2,500, 3,000 size reels. We're casting all day, so having the reels that are lighter than, you know, you go up to 4,000, it's a bit heavy. So little light reels are the way to go all day. Um, and the water that we've been consuming to keep us going, um, staying hydrated is one of the big things for a three-day comp, big hot days, long hours in the sun. Um, ben got me onto this, and it's a real game changer for being able to go the distance and keep fishing and focused all day long so um, a lot of water we probably consume like three four liters of water in a session 
these sunnies, uh, they're a must if you're out fishing and, you, and you're chasing fish on the flats. Um, this is what I use, the Costa sunnies with that blue lens when it got really high glare out in the broadwater. These things are just um, fantastic. I've only just started wearing some of these, but they're a great lens, that blue one for the really high glare situation where it was super clear. Um, in and around the mangroves, I go for like a high transition lens or something a little bit um, different colour and these Maui gyms were great for that. So um, that's how I got around spotting fish. We saw some amazing action, like super visual stuff. Ben got a giant come up, grab his slapstick. We watched the whole thing play out, turned, then he set the hook because he watched it. Uh, it's amazing. If you've got your polarized sunnies, good ones, then the whole experience is just way, way better. Uh, when we caught our fish, we were using gloves and we got this big, this is an Environet, so these types of nets just really look after the fish once they get in there and, um, you know, big, big knot, knotted nets and things like that can sort of wreck the fish's um, fin structures and that sort of thing, get hooked up with the gills and things like that and do some damage to them. So Environets, I reckon they're the way to go. I've only just had that this weekend and it's done a really good job for us. Uh, just a, a glove for handling the flathead and then a wet rag to throw over his eyes when, when we had him on the brag mat, just so it wasn't kicking around. And um, that was a tip I got from a, a bloke on YouTube um, that left a comment for me about looking after flathead. I'm always learning about how to look after them more and that's been a really good little thing for us to do once we get the fish in the boat. When I'm kayak fishing, usually I just bring them into the shore and look after them on the sand without having to lift them up and things like that. But in the boat, that's been a, um, a good one. The broadwater, the winds got up. We fished in heavy wind conditions this week and um, these little, just the reel covers and having t-shirts or rags and things to throw over the reels when we're traveling because the salt spray just gets through everything on the broadwater and um, when we're heading up further, it just got through everything. So having a real cover is a really good idea when you're out on the water. Um, that's pretty much it. I've got a whole range of hooks that we've used, upgrading trebles and things. So trying to get lures balanced, I've talked about that a lot, but upgrading trebles, having a range of those has um, been a big part of our game. So if you haven't seen the terminal tackle and the lure video, make sure you check that out. I don't know how much I'm gonna capture from the last night from uh, the Flathead Classic back at the um, at the stand at the function place where, it, where it's all happening at Southport next to the VMR. I don't know how much I'll capture of that because I'm, I'm um, up there with Birdie tonight and handing out a heap of DVDs to my kids, which I'm really excited about. And uh, yeah, there's a lot that goes on there. So hopefully you enjoyed the section with um, with the donuts getting handed around yesterday when we were you know chewing on donuts after a couple of tough days fishing. It's been a lot more enjoyable today. We've found some patterns and um, just that persistence with those really big baits is what got it done. And we, we missed fish on the first two days that if we were to pin them and get them to the boat, it would have changed our whole classic, but that's the way it goes. We persisted with the big baits and in the end it came through. So we got hits on the crossfires. The slapsticks were probably the, the standout lure. And in the end, that's what we fished with the most was the big Silstar slapsticks. Um, I got a fish on a glide bait, but this is the thing that got it done. The big nine inch Lumo rigged with uh, with a big weedless hook, a big wide gap hook, a 7.0, a stinging treble size six and a 20 pound um, connection there to the stinger. All right, so um, yeah, if you haven't seen any of that stuff on how to rig that, I've got heaps of details in my DVD, Giant Flathead in the Shallows. You can get that as an online download and I'll leave the comment, uh, the link in the comments. But um, yeah, there's a few details on how to fish that and uh, how to rig it, which make a hell of a difference. All right, we'll leave it there. We'll wrap things up. I'll bring you a video in the next couple of days on what you get in your bag at the Flathead Classic and uh, I'll bring you that in the next day or so. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.